Now to work out the difference between this year and last year, we've got to work through a few steps. The very first step is to work out what our initial measure is. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to sum up the revenue column here. So if we look down to the underlying fact table, we've got a total revenue column, which is great because now we, all we have to do is create a simple measure on top of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a total sales measure and I'm going to go sum total revenue total revenue column. If we push enter, you'll see that it's actually gone on our customers table, so we need to actually change that. So the way to change that, uh, if you are unsure, is just to go to the home, uh, the modeling tab, and then home table, and then that gets it that gets it back into the sales table, where, where which is where I want it now, uh, currently. And so if I drag total sales in, you'll see that now that we're actually, we're actually getting a result here. Now this is the first step to doing any time intelligence. You can write quite complex time intelligence functions, but what I believe is the easiest way to do it is to actually go step by step, build, up, build upon your uh, simpler measures like we've done here, uh, to then go to your time intelligence calculations. So almost like building blocks. Always build a good base and then the, uh, the uh, more advanced things are easier to implement later on down the track. So the next thing we have to do here is we need to work out, we need to work out, well first of all let's actually uh, review this information but let's review it by date because we're going to start comparing um, by dates here. Just have to get rid of the hierarchy and then you'll see here that we have for every single day uh, we have the total sales which is what we want. So now we want to actually work out well, what were our total sales last year. Now this is unlikely to show a result for that calculation only because this is the very first day. So that if it goes and back, uh, looks back to last year, there's going to be nothing there. So what we, uh, but, but anyway, we'll, we will go through the calculation and then we'll see how uh, we can actually fix it. So I'm going to create a new measure here. I'm going to use some, a time intelligence function and I'm going to go uh, total sales. In this case, I'm just going to go LY for last year. And we're going to use a time intelligence function inside of calculate. Now, remember, calculate changes the context of a calculation. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my expression, which is total sales, and then I'm going to go uh, add a filter in here. And this is where we're going to add in our time intelligence function. And Power BI makes it so darn easy. All we've got to go is same period last year and then enter in our dates column from our dates table and then close that off and push enter. Now, if I drag this measure onto, into our table now, we'll, we'll, we'll get very different results. <clears throat> and that's because we've we have written this uh, time intelligence function within calculate. Total sales is doing exactly the same job. We're just giving it a different context to complete that job in. So what we're going to find here is that this is the very first sale that we've ever made for, for this uh, analysis. But if we go down to the 1st of the 6, 2015, you'll see this exact same number. So let's now do that and I'll show you what that looks like. So we reach our first, our first, uh, our first da date where there was a sale last year, and that's the 1st of the 6th, 2015. And everything is going to relate. Uh, everything's going to, every result here is just going to be the corresponding date one year before, and that's because of the calculation that we've done here. Now for our last step, what we need to do is we need to work out, well, what's the difference between our sales this year versus our sales last year? So we want to create another measure and say uh, diff, between this year and last year. Now why? And then we've already got our measures there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go total sales minus total sales last year. That's all we've got to do. Reference the measures we've already created. And I'm going to push enter. And then if I drag that in here, you're going to see that we get some interesting results. First of all, if we go down to where we actually have a sale last year, You'll see here that this actually makes sense because um, because we've got a result here, we've got a result here. These results don't make any sense because all it's doing is going total sales minus nothing and it's getting exactly the same result. So we need to add some logic in here. 
Now, it's quite simple. All we're gonna do is if total sales last year is blank, if is blank total sales last year, we wanna make sure that that equals blank. And if not, then we want it to equal the result. So if we close this off, you'll see now that there's no results until we get down to the 1st of June 2015 and we start getting the correct results. So what's cool now is we have this calculation. We've gone through a three-step process there, but we have this calculation. I'm just gonna copy and paste this here. We have this calculation now that we can actually turn into a visualization just like anything else. And we can, uh, uh, we can uh, filter this by any time frame. So we might wanna actually look at a particular year. I'm just looking at these numbers here and I can already identify there's another issue there, but that's as we go forward. Um, but if we go back to say 2016, you'll see now we can say see on a daily basis what the difference was between this year and last year. And check this out. Say we wanted to look at this from a monthly perspective instead of a daily perspective. It's as easy as copying and pasting that visual there. And I'm going to grab my month and calendar. In this case, that's just the month and year. And you will see that Oh, I did it in the wrong one, so I'll just change it back to year. And then I want to change this to month and calendar, 2016. And you'll see now that this is actually the monthly. This is actually the monthly difference. So it's aggregated it up, but it's used exactly the same calculations, which is make, makes things incredibly easy for us. Because if you think about it, we could now use this these same calculations, the same three-step process. We could actually use it across any date dimension that is in our date table. So extremely powerful way of uh, discovering uh, very quickly or doing some time comparison very uh, very quickly in your uh, in your analysis. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators. Uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.